Welcome to this edition of Great Books, a lively discussion of a selection from the canon of exceptional literature. Here's your host, Jack Hatfield. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for the Great Books Show. I'm Jack Hatfield. Our panel meets periodically to discuss great works of classic and modern literature. Today we're discussing The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Joe will introduce the work. Joe? Thanks, Jack. Thomas Stearns Eliot was born in St. Louis, Missouri in 1888 and was educated at Harvard, the Sorbonne, and Oxford. Eliot settled in London and married in 1915. There he met the expatriate American poet Ezra Pound, who, recognizing Eliot's genius at once, criticized and encouraged his work. His first published poem, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, appeared that same year. In 1922, Eliot founded a new quarterly, The Criterion. The Wasteland appeared in its first issue. He became a British subject in 1927. Eliot was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1948. By the time of his death in 1965, he was universally recognized as one of the most influential poets and critics of the 20th century. Though later characterized by Eliot as a, quote, piece of rhythmical grumbling, constituting, quote, the relief of a personal and wholly insignificant grousing against life, the wasteland was immediately recognized as a radically new departure from existing poetic forms and acclaimed as a signal statement of the post-war sense of depression and futility. It consists of five sections, the burial of the dead, a game of chess, the fire sermon, death by water, and What the Thunder Said, together with Eliot's own notes, which explain his many varied and multicultural allusions, quotations, and half quotations. It explores the different stages of a soul in despair, struggling for redemption and renewal. The poem's central image of spiritual drought, the wasteland, is contrasted with sources of regeneration relied upon in the past, such as fertility rituals and Christian and Eastern religious practices. Though drawing upon the themes of renewal found in the Grail legend and in the medieval legend of the Fisher King, doubt remains the dominant tone. And in the end, there is no clear resolution. I thought we'd start off, maybe we can uh, discuss the first sentence and probably one of the most famous quotes from this. It is, April is the cruelest month, reading lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. What does that mean, and how does it fit in with the uh, rest of the poem? Take a shot at it. I took it to mean that spring was a time of rebirth, but there's no rebirth if you have a wasteland, because nothing will grow in a wasteland. So therefore, you're all excited and hopeful, and it hits you that there's no hope. That's kind of how I interpret yeah, it, too. too. Yeah. yeah. That is a tease, in a sense. Well, to people I, who can't renew. I saw it kind of like opening a, a manhole cover and uh, the beginning of spring, the uh, entry of life, the, the beginning of this journey. Or this, um, I, had, I had a number of thoughts about the opening of the piece. Um, April is the cruelest month. I noticed that um, he spelled it with two L's. And you could argue all day about whether that's right or not. Um, but it uh, reminds me of Chaucer and the opening of the Canterbury Tales and uh, when April with his sweet showers. Um, and he may be invoking him. Mm. And the beginning of an epic poem or a lament or something like this is usually um, addressed to the gods or to the audience. Uh, oh, arms and men or, or whatever. And here he's saying, April is the cruelest month. I'm opening by uh, invoking the beginning of the world, mm -hmm. the, the beginning of life. And so he's opening that manhole cover and he's going to describe what he sees in this wasteland. So that's what I get out of one sentence. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting because then in April, if you go back to the Canterbury Tales, talk about shouts that are bringing life back. Right. And he's going to go eventually Ooh. into the desert of the right. wasteland that we're in. But you bring up something. I was, I was going to ask it later, but I'll ask it now. Is 
uh, his, uh, he uses four or five different languages. Uh, he references everything from the Bible to Dante, to Upanishads. Um, it makes it very difficult. Why do you think he has done that? I was wondering that myself. One of the things that I thought was strange was Teresius, yeah. who was Teresius, yeah. a Teresius, male yeah. and a woman, mm -hmm. right? And I thought maybe by using all these different languages and using as one of his narrators a man and a woman in one, that he was speaking about the universality of this concept of the wasteland, that we're all in it together and we all experience the wasteland. Didn't he also say uh, in, in his note that, that Teresius in some way was the central character? Mm -hmm. in the entire poem, because he brings together both the male and the female uh, right. principles. Um, I thought that uh, I saw it in light of what he said at the very, very end. He said, um, uh, these fragments I have shored up against my ruin. He says that at the very end, um, against my ruins. Um, I thought that, that he was grasping for things that in the past were sources of renewal. Or that were um, that gave some depth and meaning to life, meaning but they're not. Life, but yeah. they're not. But they're not cohesive anymore. Everything is fragmented, and so he's grasping. Um, he's grasping at different things. That's how I. That's how I, I read it. I, I, I read it more of a Tower of Babel sort of thing. He's throwing in a, a lot of stuff that we. I don't think anybody would know. I mean, no matter how well educated how can we be with, expected to know all that stuff. Yeah, and and so. First of all, was he showing off? Well, I don't think so. I think he was just going, the type, in our world, there's a lot of different languages spoken and also different views. And later on, he gets into kind of the different views. And it makes it very confusing. And that's part of the composition of the wasteland, mm. is yes. people not being able to communicate with each other and having mm -hmm. a lot of strange sort of things coming up to him. Yeah. Anyway. Makes sense. Another, going a little bit further, uh, he has another line that was very interesting. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. It's line 30. Well, remember, dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. I thought that was a reference to death. Mm, I didn't think about that, but yeah. It's in a memento mori. So just remember that you're going to die. That, that's all it is. He's just throwing that in uh, to the depressing scene. Yeah, that one I, I couldn't get. That's, um, I mean, the idea of, of from dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. That because, the, because certainly death is an important image, uh, an important figure in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But the lines right before that are uh, your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. So that's like you can look at the past or you can look at the future, but I'm going to show you the present, and the present is... This handful of dust, <laughs> yes, that there is hope. Hmm. There's no hope. There's all sorts of lines in here that we could go on, and I have the slightest idea what they mean, but uh, going on in that same paragraph, he said, I was neither living nor dead, and I knew nothing, looking into the heart of light, the silence. But he talks about that over and over again, too, when he talks about how all the people going across London Bridge look like um, it was a reference to the inferno, right? That they're, they're traveling around hell and mm -hmm. they're not living. They're just mm -hmm. looking at their feet. And the reference about the silence he goes to again and again, when people are having conversations and there's no answer, you know, there's just silence. There's no communication between one another. So he's saying that this time that we're living in, this present, we're not living or dead. We're just sort of like an in-between state. It, uh, it made me think of uh, Prufrock and uh, Women Come and Go, speaking of Michelangelo, just this busy, mindless work of automatons. People with a cultural veneer. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that even culture itself has been degraded. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that is, is fit for mindless chatter or superficial chatter, but it doesn't really renew. It doesn't, it doesn't really penetrate. And you know that, that uh, your, your comment, uh, Maureen, because the, about um, the Dante, you know, the Dante the thing, I, I looked that up I, because he gave us the, the thing. 
And that takes place in the antechamber of hell. These are people that neither, these are people who didn't take a stand in life. Oh. They neither went to the good nor to the bad. So heaven doesn't want them and hell doesn't, hell doesn't want them. Want. But they are stuck. So it's They're stuck. stuck right yeah. out there, mm-hmm. right, right, before, right before hell. Mm-hmm. And, and later on, it's kind of where he kind of mirrors that. But uh, and, and, uh, you were talking about the proof rock. When he gets into the, the game of chess, he has these two women in a bar, just kind of meaningless. And when I've heard it spoken, uh, there, there are two ladies, and they're just kind of talking about their sex life, and nothing is. Talking very good, about the third woman. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Talking and about then, the third woman. Then sex it's life. interrupted quite often by, "Hurry up, please! It's time." If you've been on London Bar. Close the bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's close the bar down, and everyone has to quit drinking. But I thought maybe meant something more than that. I thought that the specific thing they were talking about. It was one woman talking about what she had said to another woman, Mm -hmm. and the other woman was the 31-year-old, and she says her husband's coming home, he's being demobbed, Mm -hmm. her husband's coming home, he's going to want to have a good time, meaning he's going to want to go to bed with her. Mm -hmm. Um, But she hasn't done anything to keep herself looking attractive, even though he wanted her to. Um, He wanted her to get her teeth pulled and get false teeth. And she didn't do that, and so this other woman says, and then I told her, well, if you're not going to give him what he wants, then (laughs) somebody else will. And then she said... um, then she said, the, the woman responds to her in, the, in, this, in, the, in her thing. She says, I can't help it, she said, pulling a long face. It's them pills I took to bring it off. She had five already and nearly died of young George. Those are abortive fashions. Yes. She had five pregnancies. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she get, so I, do, I think that what this is is sex, even sex is not fertile. I mean, sex mm-hmm. is sterile also. Yeah. Oh, there's other passages in there yeah. with joyless sex. Yeah. Yeah, that's a theme. And it's not, it's, and procreation is, is thwarted. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the abortions are thwarting it. Pretty bleak. Yeah. Yes, very much so. <laughs> is, is there any, I'm going to cheat. Is there any that, hope? That, that first, you know, hurry, hurry, it's almost time. Yeah. You know, the, the first time I read it, I didn't realize it was a call that the bar was closing to come for your last drink. I thought it was like, well, maybe death is coming. You oh, know? I think and that's it's the both. way I took yeah. it the first I, time. I think it's both. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, that, yeah the end sense. of things. Yeah, yeah. makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, which is why he's putting it in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So somebody said, is there any hope in it? Um, is there any hope in the thing? And at the end, um, the last couple sentences, um, He's, I'm trying to look, he's sitting and looking out, and um, he's, he's fishing with the arid plain behind me, shall I at least set my lands in order? And then uh, these fragments I have shored against my ruins, and then it ends up shante, 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 which is a special kind of piece. Um, is that positive, or is it... It seems forced to me a little bit. I mean, the the idea that uh, it, it's it's more that he's it's almost like he's wishing to have Shanti as opposed to as opposed to actually noting that it's it's here that we can that we can access it. Um, sitting upon the shore, fishing. I mean, fishing throughout this whole thing, especially with the Fisher King business, is is a symbol of renewal. Um, he's he's upon the shore with the arid plain behind him, so the wasteland is behind him now, right. and he's and he's standing there and he's facing the future. And shall I at least get my lands in order? That to me seemed a little hopeful. And then um, I, the Italian, th- this this thing here. Um, anyway, I'll go, go, I'll go, go past that. <laughs> um, no, it says, it says, uh, now I pray you by that virtue which guides you to the summit of the stairway, be mindful in due time of my pain. Um, but the, um, no, there's something more there. Yeah, there's something more there. It says, when shall I be as the swallow? That's the Philomela going back to the Philomela mm-hmm. thing. Okay, but then, and so, okay, so you got this thing, and he says, uh, these fragments I have shored up against my ruin. The very next thing he says is, Hieronimo is mad again. So it's just like a fragment, it breaks down again in madness. And then he goes to, and then he goes to Data, Dayad, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, and then Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So I thought, I thought that he was trying to pull it together and taking some steps, but then he stumbled. The thing starts to break down in madness again, and then he then he recalls to himself the three Ds or the three Das, and what he needs to do, and then Shanti. So, to me, the sense was that he was he was more 
he was more making it a determination to, to, to have that piece rather than announcing that the piece has come. I agree. Yeah, I was hoping you were going to say that. Yeah, he, he didn't earn it because it, it was bleak to the last, but he wants to feel hope. And so he superimposes it on the situation, thinking that maybe it'll come true. Mm -hmm. I, I am but, slightly different. And, and shanti, shanti, shanti <clears throat> doesn't just mean peace. It means peace uh, in any condition. It is, if an existentialist might use that, is he's got this wasteland, but your your reaction to it, the way you take it, mm. you can still find a peace that, like he says, passes. So all that's the way it is. I've identified it, and that's how the world is. Yeah, and but I can still an acceptance, uh, still acceptance, still find peace there. Mm -hmm. but, maybe, or maybe, maybe. But the da 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 part when he. It seems like a, a recipe for redemption if everybody mm. has compassion and, mm -hmm. and, and self-control and um, what's the other one? Alms giving, the first one. Self-control. The, um, the, yeah. the, the three dots. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That if we do that, then there's a way out. Giving sympathize on. We yeah. have hope if everyone can do that, but everyone's not going to be able to do that. But. But that the, might be like his mantra that hope makes him. There experience that, even if he's not experiencing that. that Maybe why he puts that at the end of all this hopelessness. Could be. I, I, I don't think antidote. it's really the end. I think it's like up to us whether we follow the three da's or not. Right? That, that's the way I took it. Or maybe just a hint of redemption. Yeah. And redemption, you mentioned redemption. I don't, unless you, I really react negatively against having to go to every sentence almost to to the dictionary and all this stuff. If you want to put it in a poem, put it in a damn poem. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so, it's but, presumptuous. But you said you said redemption and renewal and redemption. Yeah. Renewal and redemption. I didn't get that at all in here unless unless I ignored the poem and just read the footnotes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a translation of those three da words. Uh, that's what they meant. But, yeah, no, uh, I, th I thought he was he was striving for it, but I didn't say he yeah. actually achieved it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he didn't no, achieve didn't it, achieve but it. that's the recipe for maybe I, getting I, out I of saw this. An but the that, he, that, uh, that may be imaginary, but it was confusing to me. Uh, there's a, a section, and, and maybe it's the, the same one with the uh, the three women talking, but uh, there's a theme about uh, a boat, uh, a barge going down the Thames. Right. Yes. Okay. And at one point, <clears throat> he's talking about fishing. But he's not fishing in the Thames. He's fishing in a crummy canal. I thought that that was the same as the Thames. I thought that well, that's, that's what my that, question. Yeah, I don't. I, that's how I took is, it. Is, I, I wondered if that was a separate body of water or, is or it that a degraded or Thames. I think it's a degraded Thames. It's maybe it's yes, uh, you know, a maybe degraded he's Thames. Not it's with the cardboard the boxes thing. coming down. Yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. And then sandwich wrappers. Right. And it's a yeah. rat crept softly through the vegetarian, dragging its slimy belly on the bank. That's a cheery <laughs> image. <laughs> <laughs> very, very right. wholesome. And, yeah, right. And yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but but this was written after the First World War, right? That's so they, yeah. they, if you were in the trenches, you saw lots of rats, right? Mm -hmm. and yeah. You saw but, lots of despair and lots of wasteland where nothing would grow, even mm -hmm. if the rain came, nothing would grow. But now you still see rats along the Thames. If you look at it from a distance, it looks real nice. But if you walk along it, you're bound to you're see. Bound to see, yeah. Right. yeah. So it's, yeah. Hmm. And I, I thought that the three dots, he, he sort of said, maybe this, maybe this is the clue, but he undermined them. Um, like the first da is, is giving. Um, back, it's around 400. Yes. He says the first da is giving. And then he says, Dada, what, what, have, what have we given? But then he talks about prudence, an age of prudence. So he's not, he's not really giving in any wholehearted sense. He's talking about you know, an age of prudence. Then he said, then the, the second da is diad vam, I have heard the, the keys, and, and that's symp sympathy, right? But then he talks about being imprisoned in one's own self. He says, we think of the key, each in his prison, thinking of the key, each confirms a prison only at nightfall. So he's, he's thinking only about, so he's, everybody's, everybody's imprisoned in their own selves. Mm -hmm. And then, he, then the last one was um, uh, damyata, which is what self-control, 
he doesn't have self-control in this in this thing. He's he's letting other people control him. He's in the boat, and the boat's being guided by expert by an expert hand. He's not controlling the boat. Someone else is controlling the boat. So he, he says, okay, so these are the things, these are the things that if we could actually incorporate them or integrate them into our lives, these might be a channel or a beginning but of, they're not of there. The, but they're not they're there. Not. So yeah. there's we a wasteland. Like, so that's a, so that's it's, a wasteland. So there's too. a wasteland. Yeah, that's yeah. a wasteland too. Yeah. When, when I think about the good, all I see is the bad. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, this is line 330 about. He says, we who are living are now dying. Well, that I kind of understand. Yeah. But then he adds on, with a little patience. What yes. Do you think? I don't know. I, I wondered about that, too. <laughs> we who are living are now dying with a little patience. I could see without the, the A... You, with a little patience. Well, that changes the whole meaning. That changes the whole yeah. meaning. But he says, with a little patience. Maybe we're dying, but we don't want to die. So maybe we're we willing to wait. Just wait a while and you'll if, die. If you were impatient about dying, you'd go out and kill yeah, right. yourself. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, he's several. This is, has nothing to do with this, but it's, I just love this. It's, but red, sullen faces sneer and snarl from doors of mud-caked houses. I just love that. <laughs> That's that image. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I like dead mountain mouth of curious teeth. Yes. <laughs> That's a good image. Well, he was, he was in a bad way when he wrote this, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he was. Bad dreams. Yeah. He was. It, and people said this was a masterpiece, so it says something about the time that it was written. The time and the form, uh, the, the poetic form. I mean, this was I, all very new. Yeah, I, I think, again, like I do in a lot of things, I think this very much fits our time now, mm -hmm. is that, uh, you know, we, we're somewhat splitting apart in our politics and different groups and cities and all that, and uh, it's you could find a parallel now. Most also, times consider themselves perilous times. Yeah. No, but he also talks about this time in particular, about being a time when religion left, because yes. he has all these references, you know, some, some to Buddhism, but, but to Christ and, you know, the hanged man, the, 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 and the dead tree, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, the ashes and somewhere he had a footnote about the road to Emmaus, which was what happened after Jesus died and the apostles were just walking along, right? So he, he's saying that there's no longer comfort in that. And he's also right? it's not true. He says, when you die, you die. Yeah. It's, it's, it's also no like resurrection. he looks back when it was music, right? He hears mm -hmm. the music, I think that at the typist was playing the gramophone and mm -hmm. he heard the music and it brought him back to a better time when he was thinking about that, that church. But... Now nobody goes to church for comfort because it's, according to him, has been shown to be false. And so therefore, we're all in a wasteland because we used to have this hope and we don't anymore. In the, there was another, toward the end, uh, just struck me that there was a, another image I think that might have been potentially positive, but it's ambivalent like all the others, or it's somewhat undermined. It's that it's when he talks about, uh, this is around line 386. Um, it says, in this decayed hole among the mountains, in the faint moonlight, the grass is singing <clears throat> over the tumbled graves about the chapel. There is the empty chapel, only the wind's home. It has no windows, and the door swings. Dry bones can harm no one. Only a cock stood on the rooftop, Coco Rico, Coco Rico. Then there's a flash of lightning, then a damp gust, and then rain. And that, and water, people die in this thing in water, but rain also is what regenerates, is, is what brings the, the dead land back to life. Um, so even though it's an empty, so there's some hope there. Empty there's, chapel, think you think the fact that rain comes, they, there's what a they, little bit of hope. Uh, they were, they, he referenced, a, he, had a, uh, he had a footnote, and I looked up, and basically the, a lot of the imagery has to do with this, um, the questing knight, the knight who has to go to the chapel perilous. Parsifal. 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 Yeah. Parsifal. And the last, the last temptation of the knight is that he goes to, it's, it's an illusion, he goes to the chapel, he opens the door, he's finally made it, and he looks inside and it's only this. It's empty, <laughs> there are bones, but that's his last temptation, that's the last thing he has to overcome. 
in order to find the grail or whatever it was he was looking for. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, the grail. But he goes on to say uh, the Ganges was sunken in the, you know, Lamp leaves, yeah, waited for rain, yeah, so it's all so dried it's, out. Right, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he undermines it just as soon as he says, like at the end where he throws in the mad Hieronimo. Yeah. Yeah, but notice, right after he talks about that empty chapel, then he talks about the, the voice coming from the thunder, and right. he talks about the three Das, you know, which are supposedly, possibly a, a well, route to redemption. If, it's like, it's, like, the, it's like he's grasping at straws. He's trying to keep putting things together, and he, no sooner has he put it together, but then it falls apart. Yeah. And, that's, and, and so at the end, of, you're not sure... Are we at a stage where the thing is together, or the thing is a fall, fall, has fallen apart at the very end of the Well, uh, the the da might, or the three da's might be the voice of God saying that these are the goods, and He's responding. But look what we've got. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Not yeah. doing and maybe we can't. Maybe we can't. We're all sunken in our own prison. We can't sympathize with other people. Instead, London Bridge is falling down. <laughs> falling down. Huh? We, we falling just got down. a few got minutes left. So. Why don't we go around? What, Dave, what, what did you get out of this? Did you like it? Did you? I, I'm, I'm glad I made it. Uh, it was a tough hike. Yeah. Um, and I'd have to read it about five more times to get some more meat out of it. I did and read learn it. some languages. I did read it four times, and then I was really grateful that you had sent that link to, to Elliot reading it, because Elliot, did you guys listen to yes, that? Yes, yes, that's Elliot, very good. Elliot's re reading of it actually helped to illuminate a number of things for me. Um, but um, it was very tough going, and it's. But I think you're right. I mean, that's kind of the reason why I suggested it was because I thought it does have some relevance to today. Um, but it was very depressing. Yes. <laughs> it was a very yeah. depressing. It was a poem. Definite downer. Yes. What, what, what's your? I, I thought it was very heavy and depressing, and I wanted some sunlight in there, and <laughs> there isn't any. And. And it was hard to go through and get all the, the references and look up all the footnotes to right. figure out what they were talking right. about. Right. But when, when you do that, there's a, it adds a, a level of depth to the, the words that, if he just used his own words and didn't refer to other things, the poem wouldn't have It wouldn't have, be rich. It wouldn't have been rich. Like I say, who needs a poem? Just use the footnotes. But <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'm a great Elliot fan. And, uh. But... Uh, of all of them, I think this, I, I got the least out of this, the least enjoyment out of it. All the rest, I love the four quartets. The imagery in it, or Prufrock, or Drachen, or any of those is the, but this just fell flat for me. Yeah. I, and part of it is- Too much the, work. To, it work, yeah, and you, and it, you yeah. go, if you're a poem, put it in a damn poem. Yeah. And, you know, so <laughs> I, uh, I didn't enjoy it, but I'm glad I did it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time as we discuss another great selection. As Aristotle said, the best way to learn is to get together in small groups and discuss great ideas.